I can trust him that he's moving. Do better, y'all. Say amen. Shout, y'all. Say amen. So, so, so much of what happens is we go through life and we wait for something to happen. And then when we see it, we trust him. And God wants you to mature to the level where even if you don't see it, you know that God is moving. Somebody shout at me, say right? So I said to the 830 service, age doesn't bring wisdom. Just because you get older don't mean you're wiser. That's a, that's, a, that's a misnomer. You get wisdom through experience. So the way you trusted God at 25, you don't trust him like that at 55. Because you've matured. Everybody shout mature. You've ascended to another level in your faith where, where I can actually talk to God and even if I can't see his moves, I know he's moving. I, I have that level of confidence in God. And so, so many of us, we exist in church and in spaces where we come to church Sunday after Sunday after Sunday, but, but really, have you really, have you really trusted that every morning you wake up, God is moving? Every person you meet, every place you go, every step you make, every story you go into, I don't care what it is. That everything God does has intentionality behind it. And you got to trust him that his moves, hear me y'all, all of them are working for your good. Somebody shout louder. Shout, say amen y'all. Right? And that's maturity. That's growing up. That's because that goes beyond just coming to church. Because you can be a good church goer and a poor believer. Talk to me somebody. I'm not in the I'm not in the raising church folk. That ain't that no no. We need people that can move. To, so regardless of what you see, regardless of what you hear, regardless of what you experience, I know that God He's my advocate, and even if I can't trace Him, I can trust Him. That's maturity. Everybody say maturity. So so last week I gave you the first part of that series. God's moves. I'm going to give you part two of that today. Acts the 12th chapter, start at verse number one. When you found it, shout, I got it. All right, now by that time, Herod the king stretched out his hand to harass some, some from the church. Then he killed James, the brother of John, with the sword. And because he saw that it pleased the Jews, he proceeded further to seize Peter also. Now it was during the days of unleavened bread. So when he had arrested him, he put him in prison. Where did he put him? Shout at y'all, say in prison, and delivered him to four squads of soldiers to keep him, attending to bring him before the people after Passover. Peter therefore was kept in prison, but constant prayer was offered to God for him by the church. Everybody say the church. And when Herod was about to bring him out the night before Peter was sleeping, bound with two chains between two soldiers and the guards before the door were keeping the prison. Now behold, an angel of the Lord stood by him. And the light shone in the prison, and he struck Peter on the side and say, raised him up, saying, Arise quickly. And his chains fell off. Shh. Then he said to the angel, angel said to him, Gird yourself, boy, put shoes on. So he said, Put your clothes on. So he went and followed him and did not know what was done by the angel was real, but thought he was seeing a vision. Go down to verse number, go to verse number 12. So when he had considered this, he came to the house of Mary, the mother of John, whose surname was Mark, was many with, and where many were gathered together. What were they doing, y'all? Do better. Do what? And, at, and as Peter knocked at the door of the gate, a girl named Rhoda came to answer. When she recognized Peter's voice because of her gladness, she did not open the gate, but ran in and announced that Peter stood before the gate. But they said to her, you are beside yourself or out of your mind. Yet she kept insisting that it was so. So they said, it is his angel. Let me stop right there. For the second installment of the series, I want to talk from the subject, getting God's attention. Getting, somebody shall get God's attention. Uh-uh, shout louder, say get God's attention. This year, and more specifically this month, marks the 400th year that the first Africans were brought to the shores of this country to be slaves in America. Yes, 400 years ago in Jamestown, Virginia, in the year 1619, uh, the first Africans from Africa landed on these shores with the intent on making them slaves. Everybody say slaves. 
there have been and will continue to be commemorations all across this country for the rest of the year, this year marking the significance of this event. Somebody say event. Shout event, y'all. For 400 years, people of African descent have been in this country. 400 years of African descent, people of African descent have existed in this country. We understand that those 400 years have been filled with achievement, excellence, dignity, pride, and power. Everybody say power. Shout it better than that. Say power. We understand that those 400 years have been filled with tenacity, persistence, passion, and creativity. I'm sure that many years from now, someone is going to read how you and I celebrated 400 years of Africans in America and ask the question, in the midst of your achievement, your tenacity, and your dignity, laced throughout that same history is genocide, racism, lynchings, and abuse. And the one question that they're going to say is, how in the world are y'all still here. I'm sure that in between the literature that speaks of the fierceness of a people, it'd be plain to see the overarching systemic discrimination and bigotry that has been perpetuated on African Americans, and somebody is going to ask the question, how in the world are y'all still here? Any other people, any other group would have been decimated and destroyed. Any other people would have been extinguished. How did this people who suffered so much, been hurt so much, been killed so often, been abused consistently, been murdered and raped and oppressed and lynched and suppressed? How in the world are y'all still here? Somebody say here. You and I both know that is the question that they're going to ask many years from now because it would seem that every generation during the 400-year occupancy in this country has had their own burdens to share. Somebody say yes. Every generation. Say every generation. Shout every generation. I need everybody to shout every generation. Every generation has had their own personal struggle. As a result of that struggle, that burden, the question is forced to come out. How in the world are y'all still here? Uh, it seems slavery should have taken y'all out. Black code should have taken y'all out. Jim Crow should have taken y'all out. Segregation should have taken y'all out. COINTELPRO should have taken y'all out. The Tuskegee experiment should have taken y'all out. Convict leasing should have taken y'all out. Cocaine fed to our community should have taken y'all out. Nixon, Reagan, Bush, and the fool in office now should have taken y'all out. How in the world are y'all still here? Somebody say, how y'all still here? In the words of Maya Angelou, but they keep on rising. What is it that keeps pushing y'all, lifting y'all, empowering y'all, strengthening y'all, motivating y'all, anointing y'all to get up every morning? Why in the world do y'all keep having babies, knowing what your brown babies going to deal with in the world? How are y'all still here? Well, beloved, my answer would be the obvious because, because we protested. Everybody say protested. Because we marched. Say we marched. Uh -huh. We supported one another. We protested. We marched. We stood against every evil for 400 years and demanded respect. Everybody say respect. Shout it, y'all. Say respect. We created, we invented, we wrote, we built, we sang. We did all of these things. We protested, we marched, we supported one another, we stood against every evil. We created, we invented, we wrote, we built, we sang, and a host of other things. But the one thing I know for sure that we did before we landed on this country, before we landed on the shores of this country, the one thing that I know that has carried us for 400 years, the one thing that I know sustained us for 400 years, the one thing that I know that has caused us to survive from Africa to America and the 400 years in America is that we always had prayer. Yeah, don't worry, you'll get it in two seconds. Yeah, we acknowledge all the achievements and milestones that were garnered in the face of systemic blatant racism. But the one thing behind all of those achievements and milestones is that somebody prayed. Somebody say yes. You can't retell the story for 400 years of survival and not include somewhere in the dissertation and they prayed. Somebody say yes. From the shores of Jamestown, Virginia in 1619, 400 years later to 5th and Phillips, the one thing, the one element that can be linked to our survival and persistence is prayer. Everybody say prayer. Louder, say prayer. One more time, shout prayer. We have believed, and many of us still do, some may not, even in church, but I believe, and I got a witness in the house today, that prayer still works. 
that while marching and protesting and fighting for justice and freedom is good and necessary, can I submit to you that it still needs to be saturated in prayer? Prayer on earth causes action in heaven. We believe that when we talk to God, he would hear our prayers. And in the words of my grandmother, y'all don't know about this, if we talk to God, he would see about us. Prayer has always been the one key element in our narrative that kept us trusting God, that God can do anything, shout anything. Let, let me say that again. The one element that we can never forget and must be duplicated for generations yet to come is the necessity of prayer. Somebody say prayer. That intentional act of earth communicating with heaven and heaven intervening on earth should still exist today. In fact, let, let me pause right here because I got some folk that are not so arrogant, that are not so conceited, that are not so come up, uh, caring about themselves. But I got some folk that are humble enough to admit that they would not be where they are today unless somebody prayed for them. Yeah, you sit there and look at me. I'm going to ride the sermon by myself. I got 50 people that can testify. I wouldn't be living where I'm living, driving what I'm driving, in my right mind, if somebody hadn't prayed for me. Maybe that ain't your te neighbor's testimony, but I can get 50 folk can testify. I wouldn't be in my right mind, sitting in the seat I'm sitting in, if it had not been for somebody praying for me. Can I get 50 people to jump up right now? Because you know you're here on somebody else's prayer slap somebody say I got here on somebody else's prayers uh huh in fact in fact look at me in fact look at me in fact look at me in fact let me shout the series how many behind the scene moves did God have to make just to get you here how many moves did God have to make to make sure you were in the right place, talking to the right person at the right, go, go, Coleman. How many moves did God have to make to keep that accident away from you, to keep you from losing your mind, to keep you from losing your house, to keep you from giving up the ghost? I wish I had some folk in here that could give God glory over some moves that God has made. Slap your neighbor, say he's made some moves. Uh -huh. Forgive my old school. I got a young folk in church today, but forgive my old school. The songwriter said it right. Somebody prayed for me. Had me on their mind. Took the time and prayed for me. Then they got happy and said, I'm so, I'm so glad they prayed. Is there anybody that can take five seconds and give God glory? Because somebody prayed. Wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I'm dealing with a younger crowd, so I got work to stay. Here it is. Um, Here's the shift in the sermon. Don't you ever look at me. Don't you ever underestimate the power of your prayer. Yeah, even though we live in an age where things go in and out of style, can I tell you what never goes out of style? Prayer, shout prayer. I know we live in an age where many people have become more humanistic in their ideology. Humanism says this, it's an outlook or a system of thought that attaches prime importance to human rather than divine or supernatural matters. I know, I know many folk in this age, come to church even, believe more in human hands than divine hands. Well, well I got news for the humanist. Prayer still works and God still moves. I wish I had, I wish I had. Your, your philosophy may, may have it where you trust yourself, talk to yourself, encourage yourself, and never talk to God. But my philosophy says I can do all that and still have a little talk with Jesus. I'm convinced more than ever that we who are God's children, we who want to see God move, are going to have to pray more than ever before. H hear me, beloved. While we do all of the other things concerning liberation and empowerment, you are not ever neglect prayer. Somebody say prayer. One writer says it like this, prayer power has never been tried to its fullest capacity. If we want to see mighty wonders of divine power and grace wrought in the face of weakness, failure, and disappointment, let us answer God's standing challenge. Call unto me and I will answer you and I'll show you mighty things which you know not of. God invites us not to see what he's doing. Watch this. God doesn't invite you to see what he's doing. God never invites, look at me, look at me. God never invites you to see what he's doing. But he always invites you to believe that with prayer he's doing something. Y'all going to miss a shout in here. S some of us want to be in God's business so much, that's why we don't pray. Because we want God to show us what he's doing. But God say that ain't faith. Sometimes you got to go to God when you don't know what God going to do. But you can trust that he's up to something. I wish I had 50 people in here that knew God was up to something in your life. 
I said, I wish I had 50 people and knew God was up to something. I'm with the right crowd today. Because some of y'all don't believe that. I wish I had 30 people that could jump up and throw your hands in the air. God is moving in your family. He's moving in your children. He's moving in your grandchildren. Is there anybody that believes that God is up? Slap your neighbor and say, he up to something. He up. God invites us to come to you. Come to him. Watch this, y'all. Hear me. Look at me. God invites us to come to him. What he won't do is tell you how he moves, when he going to move, where he going to move. That's what prayer is, trusting that I'm going to put it in your hands, and I'm going to watch you work. I got, a, I got a question. Have you ever put something in God's hand and sat back and watched God work? Give me five in the house. I don't need everybody. Some of y'all need to make your grocery list out. Have you ever given God? I'm talking to real folk. Y'all other faking folk. I don't want y'all. Have you ever given God something? You don't know when it happened. You don't know where it happened. You don't know how it happened. All you know is before you knew, God turned that thing around. And you were sitting with a blessing. I need 20 people to testify. Pastor, I've been there. I don't know where the breakthrough came from. I don't know where the blessing showed up. All I know is he came through just in the nick of time. Is there anybody that could jump up and give him glory? Here's what I believe. Much of trusting God's moves comes at the point of your prayer life. I know you got nice car, I know you got house, but do you have a prayer life? If you wanna trust God's move and get his attention, you better start praying. Somebody say pray about it. That's the lesson we glean from the text this morning. Let me roll through. When we drop in, we find Peter, the brash disciple of Jesus in prison. Everybody say in prison. Who's in prison? Everybody say Peter. Where is he? Who is it? Where is he? Who is it? Peter's in prison. We see that Herod Agrippa, the first grandson of Herod the Great, is trying to vex the church. Don't miss this shout. He killed James, the brother of John, with the sword. When he saw it, that it pleased the Jews, he stretched forth his hand against Peter, the leader of the church. Peter was preaching the resurrection of Jesus Christ, baptizing many of the faith. Herod saw the church and Christians as dangerous. Everybody shout, I'm dangerous. The more that Herod tried to kill him, the more the church grew. Come on, Coleman. The more they tried to kill him, the church kept on growing. So he decided if I kill the head of the movement, I can kill the movement. He just don't know God. In our text, Peter's in prison. Where's Peter? Who's in prison? Even though Herod had a plan, watch God's plan. The book in history lets us know in prison, Peter was treated as public enemy, number one. Don't run out of church on this. He was held in maximum security, one man, which meant he had 16 soldiers in squads of four. Each were allotted to guard this Galilean fisherman. 16 men was sent to guard one man. Day and night, Peter was kept chained to the wrist of two soldiers, one on his right hand, one on his left hand. Don't miss it, y'all. Why was he so heavily guarded? Could it be that Herod had heard in Acts 4 that he and John got caught up and put in prison, but for some reason they got out? Let me just give y'all something. This for free. Beloved, even your enemies know you're anointed. Help me, somebody. Even your enemies know the power of God. That's why some stuff that happened to you didn't happen to you. Because your enemy was getting ready to touch you. But they stopped, left you alone because God had his hand on you. Is there anybody in here that can give God glory? Because even your enemies know the power of God. Even your enemies can't mess with you. I wish I had 50 people in here that can give God some. Slap somebody and say, you heard about me? I'm God's child. I'm God's baby. You better get your mouth off me. Get your hands off me. You don't even know what I got going on in my life. The books say, touch not my anointing. Do my prophets no harm. If you mess with me, you got to mess with the God that I serve. Is there anybody that can give them glory? Well, who's in prison? Where is he? Peter is in prison. Heavily guarded like Suge Knight. 16 soldiers. Each one chained to a guard. One on his right hand, one on his left hand. Don't miss the shout. 18 soldiers guarding. Everybody say one man. Y'all gonna miss a sermon because y'all tired. Say one man. 
18 soldiers guarding what? No, 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 no. Here it is. 18 soldiers guarding who? But constant fervent prayer was offered to God for him by the church. Word got out. Old boy was in prison on lockdown. Church got together. They didn't gossip about him. They didn't complain about him. They didn't argue about him. They didn't blame him for how he got hooked and booked. Help me, somebody. They came together and they offered constant prayer. Everybody say, pray about it. Y'all going to miss yourself. Say, pray about it. Uh, somebody told somebody who told somebody else, I know what we can do. We may not have keys to the prison. Do it, Coleman. But we got keys to heaven. Let me give you my first point. And I think, I think for me, I think for me, this is the, probably the, one of the most powerful points that you ever could get. If you really want to get God's attention, if you really want to see God move in your life, um, this was, y'all ain't going to get it, but I'm going to give it in half. Give God something you can't do. God's moves are often predicated on us praying about things we can't do. I heard somebody say the other day, stop praying doable prayers. Because if you can do it, you don't need to pray about it. Give God something you can't do. Give me five in here, y'all. Give him something that's out of your reach. Give him something that's above your ability. W watch me. When we pray big impossible prayers and audacious prayers, we treat our God like he's big enough to answer the impossible. When we pray big, bold prayers, we're asking God to mystify us. Somebody say, mystify me. Y'all slow this morning, but I'm going to do it anyhow. God bless me so much that when I try to explain the blessing you gave me, I don't even have words to explain how much you bless me. Y'all just missed the whole sermon. God bless me so much that when somebody asks me, how'd you get that blessing? I, I can't even explain it. Before I knew it, the blessing showed up. The door was open. The opportunity came. Is there anybody that wants God to blow your mind? Then you got to give him glory right now. I need some folk to testify. Then you want God to blow your mind like your mind has never been. Watch this. Some of y'all going to miss this, and, and I'm, I'm praying for you. If you pray small, you're going to get small. Uh-uh, y'all missed it. If you pray small, you're going to get small. But when is the last time you prayed an impossible prayer? See, 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 because God works in impossibilities. The problem with us is that we've made God miniature and small. Do you not know that God is bigger than cancer? He's bigger than diabetes. He's bigger than sickness. He's bigger than death. Y'all ain't saying nothing to a black man in here. He's bigger than unemployment. He's bigger than foreclosure. He, I wish I had four people in here that could jump up because you knew God was bigger. Slap somebody and say, how big is your God? Hey! Here it is. Look at me. Look at me. Peter was in prison and they couldn't get him out of prison. So they had to go to God who could get him out of prison. Watch this. You want to know how you want to know you want to know what impossible look like? Moses prayed and God spared Israel from judgment. Joshua prayed and caused the sun to stand still. Hannah prayed and in her barren condition gave birth to a baby. Solomon prayed and God gave him wisdom. Elijah prayed and God sent fire down from heaven. Jonah prayed and pushed him out of the belly of a whale. Paul and Silas prayed and God opened a jail cell. The thief on the cross prayed and God gave him eternal life. Y'all ain't saying that. My grandmama prayed and I'm still covered right now. My mama prayed and I'm still walking in favor right now. Is there anybody that knows if you give him the impossible, he will come through. I need 50 people that's ever seen God do the impossible. Jump up and give him glory. Yeah. Slap a neighbor and say he can do the impossible. He can do. Here it is. Here it is. Here it is. Hey, look at me. Hey, look at me. Listen, hey, look at me. Don't give God no prayer you can do, baby. Give him something you can't do. 
and don't doubt it when you pray about it. If you doubt it, you've canceled the prayer when you said it. Give them something that's ridiculous, that's absolutely insane. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me. And watch God move stuff in your life just to blow your... So, 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 first point, give God something you can't do. Second point, when you pray, give God something you don't do. Here's the second point. I don't know how y'all going to receive it because y'all moving a little slow today, so we'll just give, give it. Um, pray with persistence. The book says that they pray constant, fervent prayers for Peter. The Greek word for constant <laughs> means they stretched out. <laughs> that means it's like a it's like a rope you tighten. They laid themselves out before God. Prayer that is stretched out is costly. Um, it's not, it's not, Lord bless me, come see about me, do something, amen. You ain't bust the ceiling because it's not necessarily quantity, it's quality. This is the kind of prayer where time is invested, effort is expended, energy is given. It's the sort of prayer it's the sort of prayer, y'all gonna miss it. I pray you get it. It's the type of prayer life that nags God until something happens. The kind of prayer that doesn't give way to discouragement. The kind of prayer that holds on to the horns of the altar. These folk didn't just pray and eat, pray and meet. They, they tarried in prayer. They prayed until, until something happened. I don't know. I don't know how you grew up. I don't know your religious narrative. But I grew up around folk who didn't have nice cars. <clears throat> they didn't have three-piece suits. They had degrees and education. They, ain't, they ain't had none of that. Grew around folk, my grandmother's cafeteria worker, went to the third grade. But it's interesting that when somebody needed something, they didn't go to the degree folk. <laughs> when they needed a breakthrough, they didn't go to the folk that went to school. <laughs> they went to the folk that can, that can pray for you to come up out of wheelchair. Pray for you that, pray for you that a tumor disappear. Y'all gonna miss it, y'all gonna miss it. They prayed for you to get your eyesight back. They prayed for your deaf ears to come unstop. They prayed for deliverance from drug addiction. Mothers that didn't have education, they'd meet in church and they'd stretch out on God. If you needed a breakthrough, they didn't send you to the clinic first. They sent you to the church. Y'all gonna miss a sermon in here because if a mother laid her hands on you, she was going to break stuff in you that wasn't even there. Y'all help me preach right there. And she started praying, Father God, in the name of Jesus, we come to you now. Y'all ain't going to help me preach in here. We come to you now with our heads bowed. God, we're leaning on you now. We depend on you now, God. We don't come to you arrogant. We don't come to you conceited. We come to you trusting. You said in your words that no weapon formed against me shall prosper. And so God, in the name of Jesus, I'm laying my hands on my child because I believe in breakthrough. I believe in healing. Then because they didn't have nothing else to say, mother would simply say, come now, Lord. Come now, Lord. I wish I had 50 people in here that's ever had somebody pray over you. Come now, Lord. Heal somebody. Touch somebody. I wish I had more. It is. Listen, listen, listen. God has not stopped healing. He has not stopped recovering. He's not stopped healing cancer. But when was the last time you stretched out on God? 
When was the last time you stretched out on him for your children? You stretched out on him for your grandchildren. You stretched out on him for your parents. The problem is you letting them go on automatic pilot. But some of us can testify that we're still operating out of a covering that was on us the day we were born. I wish I had 50 people in here that could jump up because you still operating on a covering. Your mama prayed for you. Your daddy prayed. Listen. Sit down, sit down. Let me tell you the story. Um, there's a woman in Philadelphia that was mentored by First Lady's mother. Nelda Madison was mentored by this woman who received national attention as an intercessory prayer. Her name is Mother Dabney. Mother Dabney was famous because if you needed something from God, you would go to Mother Dabney's church and you, she would pray for you. And she is infamous uh, for healing people coming up out of wheelchairs and tumors disappearing. And she was just a prayer warrior. And I'm, she wrote a book and the book, this is shout by so the book is called What It Means to Pray Through. Shh, go on, call me. And it's a blueprint on what it means to stretch out on God. In one part of the book, she describes the prayer she prayed every day, asking God to give her husband, Elder E.H. Dabney, a larger church to accommodate the people. This mother, this mother, this mother prayed. Listen to how she prayed. Not just what she prayed, but how she prayed. Lord, if you will bless my husband in the place you sent him to establish your name, if you break the bonds and destroy the middle wall of partition, if you give him a church and a congregation that'll be a credit to your people and all of Christendom, I will walk with you for three years in prayer, both day and night. I'll meet you every morning at 9 a.m. sharp, and you'll never have to wait for me, but I'll be there waiting for you. I'll be there to greet you. I'll stay there all day if you want me to. I'll devote all my time to you. Furthermore, if you listen to the voice of my supplication and break through in that wicked neighborhood and bless my husband, I will fast 72 hours each week for two years. While I'm going through the fast, I will not go home to sleep in my bed. But if I got to stay in the church, I'll rest on newspapers and carpet. Mother Daphne said, as soon as I made a covenant, the heavens opened up and the glory of the Lord fell from all around me. I knew that he prepared me to enter into this prayer ministry. I would kneel and pray until I wore all the skin off my knees on those hardwood floors. I suffered. The flesh of my bones was numb and I fasted not eating or drinking natural food but I had a direct supply from heaven. Soon the mission was too small to accommodate the people. The lines were so long the church began to explode. My husband came back to me and prayed for another place. So I went to God and prayed for another building and wouldn't you know it there was a man who decided to rent us another building here is the shout folk thought mother Dabney had lost her mind because she prayed so much but what they came to realize is that God answered her prayer so folk from all walks of life if you had any ailment if you had any issue if you had any problem you would show up at a church wanting mother Dabney to pray for you I got news for Fifth Street this morning the same power that Mother Dabney had. Each one of us has today. You, you, you want to see something in your child? You, you need to stretch out on God. You want to see something at your job? You need to stretch out on God. You want a addiction broken from a loved one? You need to stretch out on God. You want your baby coming back home? Stretch out on God. You want healing in your body? Stretch out on God. You want a door to open for you? Stretch out on God. If you stretch out on God, you can see God do some stuff that he's never done before. Let me tell you the problem. If you don't stretch out, he can't do nothing. But can I find 50 people in here that don't mind jumping up and stretching out on God? You got to give them your everything. Lord, show up. Lord, deliver. Y'all going to miss it in here. Y'all going to miss it in here because here it is. If you stretch out on God and you say, God, here I am. I need you to move in my family. I need you to move in my children. I need you to move on my job. I need you to move in my health. I need everybody to throw your hands up and shall stretch out on God. If you stretch out on God, miracles will show up. Blessings will show up. Is there anybody that can give them glory and stretch out on Ah, slap somebody, say, stretch out on God. 
Breakthrough happens when you stretch out. Power happens when you stretch out. Your child is dropped off at a school. You better learn how to stretch out in your car while you're driving your child to school. Say, Lord, cover him in the name of Jesus. While you're on your way to your job, you better stretch out to God and say, God, protect me while I'm at my job. Cover my mind. Cover my heart. Cover my spirit. When you go home, you need to cover your whole house. You need to go to every room. You need to go to every room. Just a few weeks ago, my oldest, Chandler, moved into his new apartment. First time he got his own apartment. Before we moved anything in that apartment. Y'all don't know nothing about this. Sherry pulled the oil out. And we put oil all around. Because you better learn how to stretch out. You better learn how to stretch out for your child. I don't care if they 45. They still need your prayers. If they in your house, they still need your prayers. I need 50 people to jump up right now and give God glory because you want to stretch out. It is. It is. It is. It is. If you pray in doable prayers, stop. If you're not praying with passion, stop. You need to learn how to go to God, put yourself on the altar, and say, Lord, do it. Somebody shall do it, Jesus. Give them praise and shall do it, Jesus. Last point. I'm out of here. I'm out of here. Last point. I'm out of here. Don't pray a doable prayer. Pray with passion. And my last point. Last point. Get yourself around some folk that know how to pray. Notice they were not in the cathedral. They weren't in a brick building with a cross. They went in the sanctuary. They went in somebody's house. Everybody said a house. During these times, people met at each other's houses, but they still had church. I'm an advocate for individual prayer, but they wanted to go further. Everybody said go further. Uh-huh. Peter was in prison for preaching Jesus. That's the problem. Saints came together to pray for a move of God. That's the solution. Private prayer is good. Private prayer works. Private prayer is necessary. We should spend time praying by ourselves. That kind of prayer builds you up, sustains you, renews you, establishes you. Private prayer is good. Y'all just missed it. It's good. It's necessary. Yeah, I said it's good. Say it's good. Say necessary. But something happens when the saints get together. Huh? There's something that happens in the atmosphere when the folk who know the Lord get together and call on the Lord. When you can get around some folk who know who God is and they can start praying with you. The book said, when two or three are gathered together in my name, there I am in the midst of them. I, I got to help some of y'all in here. Tr try, try it next time. Before you start something with a group of folk, tr tr try something you ain't never done before. I know you ain't never done it before, but try something you ain't never done before. Before you get ready to do something, just look at everybody and say, y'all, before we do it, let's pray. <laughs> Corporate prayer helps us encourage one another. Corporate prayer strengthens us to press on. The book say two are better than one because they have a good reward for their toil. Corporate prayer reminds us that we're not in this alone. These churches, folk had one agenda. They had one focus. Not that other things didn't matter, but this one prayer meeting was about God singing about people. Can I help y'all? Get folk out of your life who won't pray with you. Because here it is, beloved, if you can get some folk that are not too shamed to covenant. And maybe I need to say this. You do not have to be perfect in order to talk to God. Some of the best prayers come from imperfect people. I had the Holy Ghost told me to say that. Stop worrying about what you did on Saturday night. Just talk to him on Sunday morning. Don't worry about mistakes you've made and failures you've made. God hears everybody's prayers. Isn't that good news, beloved, that I can mess up and still talk to the master? Is there anybody that's ever done that before? You know you said some stuff you shouldn't have said. You've done some stuff you shouldn't have done. But you still were able to go to God. Can you give God glory right now? Because God will do Hold on, hold on, hold on. Shh. Watch this, watch this. So that watch this. They pray together. Everybody say together. I'm out. Have a good day. Bless y'all. Pray, pray for y'all. Uh, here it is. They pray together. Y'all gonna miss this. They pray together in the house together. Um, you're gonna miss it, but that's okay. You'll get it Friday. Here it is. They pray together. Look at me. Hey, look at me. 
They pray together. The Bible says. Well, let me culminate it first. God stood up, leaned over heaven, put his ear to the earth because he heard some children praying. The Bible says, culminize it. He looked at one of his angels, gave him that nod, and before you know it, the angel was in the prison with Peter. I'm sorry, y'all. I'm still old school. All day and all night, angels are watching over me. You want to know how you made it to the day? You had an angel watching over you last night. You want to know how you got to where you are? You had an angel. Is there anybody in history? The book says that the angel showed up. It didn't wait. It says suddenly an angel appeared. Y'all going to miss your shout because it said when the angel showed up, Peter's chains fell off. Can I kill you? I didn't tell 830 this, but I'm about to kill 1030. Notice in the text that when the angel showed up, he woke Peter up. But God is so good that even when he wakes Peter up, he keeps the guards asleep. <laughs> Y'all better get your shout in here. Don't ever doubt that when God wakes you up, he'll put your enemies to sleep. I wish I had some whoo, folk in here. And when the angel shows up, Peter's chains fall off. Is there anybody in here that knows when God shows up, your chains will fall off? Can I get five people in here that can give God some glory? Because you know that you know that prayer still works. Some of y'all know that if you talk to God, God will show up. Is there anybody that can give God praise? The book says that the angel looked at Peter and he said, Peter, come on. Peter goes through the first gate. He goes through the second gate. Y'all just missed a shout. There were guards stationed at every place. But God is so good that you, God will make you undetectable while he's delivering you. Your enemies can't touch you. Is there anybody? Peter goes out, and the first house he goes to is the house with the praying folk. I'm about to make y'all go crazy. Peter goes to the house. And the book says, Peter starts knocking on the door. Now, I don't know about y'all, but if I had been in prison, I don't know if I'd have knocked on the door. I'd have kicked that dog on the door in. They had your boy on lockdown. But Peter, wanting to bless the folk in the house, he knocks on the door. Little girl named Rhoda show up. She doesn't see Peter. She hears Peter. She's so happy, she forgets to unlock the doggone door. She goes back to the people. She said, y'all, Peter's at the door. They look at the girl and say, girl, you crazy. Peter ain't, ain't at the doggone door. Now somebody would say, this gonna shout, mother. Somebody would say, why would God show up to some folk who were doubting that Peter was at the door? I'm about, I'm about to lose it right now. Because even your imperfect faith can cause God to show up. <laughs> even your imperfect faith. I wish I had 50 people in here that knew something about imperfect faith. I may not do everything. If I caught on with a little bit of sense, he'll show up in the nick of time. Is there anybody that's ever prayed an imperfect prayer and God still showed up for you? Would you give him glory right now? Would you open your mouth? I need 50 folk to jump up right now because if you talk to God, God will do it. If you pray to God, God will do it. Somebody clap your hands. Give God glory. Because if you talk to him, slap three people. Say, he'll do it. He'll do it. I say, jump up and slap three people. Testify. He'll do it. He'll do it. He'll do it. Y'all ain't slapping nobody. Slap somebody and say, he'll do it. He'll do it. Do it. He'll do it. He'll do it. He'll do it. Yes, he'll do it. Do I have a witness? Yes, he'll do it. 801 Northeast Fifth Street. Yes. That if you ask God, God will. Yes, he will. Do it. Do it. Jesus. Give him glory. Yes. Give him glory. Give him glory. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Give him glory. He'll do it. Yes, he will. 
throw your hands up. He'll do it. 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 Yes. Yes, he will. Slap somebody. Say yes, he will. Won't he do it? I said, won't he do it? I need everybody to jump up and testify for yourself. Say, I know he'll do it. I've seen him do it. Somebody shout. He'll do it. Yes, he will. It is. It is. It is. Let me tell you what this is. You ain't stretched out on him. If you stretch out on him, he'll give you a mind-blowing blessing. Some of y'all don't know what a mind-blowing blessing look like. Nobody else could do it but God. Somebody say he'll do it. Yes, Lord. Throw your hands in the air. Wait, come on, throw your hands in the air. Watch this. Yeah, he'll do it. Ah, uh, 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 he'll do it. I come from that culture. We believe he'll do it. I know he'll do it. I ain't even got to see my child. I know God will do something for my child. He'll do it. I ain't even got to be at the job. God will do something at the job. He'll do it. Hear me, lift your hands. How many of y'all believe he'll do it? How many of y'all believe he'll do it? Come on, how many of y'all believe he'll do it? Here it is. Let me mature you. Stop thinking you got to do it by yourself. Stop operating on automatic pilot. Get to the place where God will show up and blow your mind. Somebody say, blow my mind, God. Blow my mind. Someone say, blow my mind, God. Here it is. Lift your hands. Lift your hands. Here it is. Ah, oh, God. Ah, oh, God. Yeah. Stay right there. Ah, oh, your God. Ah, oh, your God. Some of y'all want something from God so bad, you don't even know how to articulate it. You want God to do some stuff you've never had done in your family. Higher God, higher God, higher God, higher God, higher God. God. You need to act as an intercessor for somebody else today, for yourself, for somebody you know, higher God. Oh God, oh God, I hear a knocking at the door. 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 I said, I hear a knocking at the door. My blessings on the other side of the door. My miracles on the other side of the door. My breakthroughs on the other side of the door. My joy is on the other side. Oh my God. Increase your faith, church. Increase your faith, church. Increase your faith. Oh my God. You're not getting his attention. Get his attention. Get his attention. Get his attention. Get his attention. He'll move if you get his attention. He'll move if you get us into. Hold on us. Hey. Hey. Spirit of the living God. Spirit of the living God. Hey. Fall fresh. Fall. Fall fresh. It is. Hold on, Sharon. Hold on. How many of y'all believe he's a healer? Don't play with me today. Uh uh. Uh uh. I don't want no church response. How many of y'all know he's a healer? Do you know he's a healer? Do you know he's a restorer? Do you know he'll bless you and blow your mind? Do you know he'll open doors no man can shut? Do you know he'll shut doors no man can open? Does anybody know he can make a way out of no way? Does anybody know he is an overcomer? He'll empower you. Here it is. Come on. Lift your hands. If you're here today, rumble with that. If you're here today, I want to meet you at this altar right now. Come on. Come on. Come on. Run down. Run down. Run down. Run down. Run down. Run down. Oh, God, we're calling on you. We're calling on you, Jesus. Have your way in our lives. Have your way in our homes. Have your way on the job. Have your way, Jesus. Have your way. Holy Spirit. Hey. Call a fresh on Hey. Us. Hover over us, Jesus. Hover over us, Jesus. Somebody lift them up. Lift them up. Lift them up. Call a fresh on us. Come on. Spirit of the living Spirit God. Spirit of the living God. Call a Fall fresh. Call Fall fresh. Hold afresh. Hold on to Jesus. Hold on to Jesus. Hold on to Jesus. Move in to Jesus. Move in to Jesus. Speak through us, Jesus. Speak through us, Jesus. 
Have your way. 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 Come now, Jesus. Come now, Jesus. Come now, Jesus. Come now, Jesus. Speak now, Holy Spirit. Speak now, Holy Spirit. Speak now, Holy Spirit. Hey, thank you. Oh, God, thank you. Let me say this. Thank you. Let me say this. Oh, God, thank you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hold on, this God. Let me say this. Let me say this. These people, these people in the Bible prayed until something happened. They prayed until an angel showed up. Hear me, hear me, hear me. I don't care where you come from. I don't care the mistakes you might have made. I got news for you. God is waiting for you to get his attention. God's been waiting on you to get his attention. If you talk to him, you're getting his attention. Even if you ain't, you ain't got to go hard in the paint like other folk. Stretch out, fall out. You ain't got to do that. But you got to do something. You want to you wanna see something happen? Stretch out on him. And watch him do some stuff. Some of us are living witnesses that we living on prayers that were prayed the day we were born. You want to see God move? Tell him about it. Talk to him. I'm crazy enough to believe he can still heal folks out of some wheelchairs. I wish I had a church. He can still call tumors to disappear. I still believe that cancer ain't bigger than God. I don't care what y'all say. He! I still believe it. I still believe that he can bring children back home. I wish I had help in the house. I still believe he can promote you to a position you ain't even qualified for. I still believe it. I still believe it. I still, I still believe it. I want to help you. You want to get God's attention? You got to talk to him and watch him move. On one side of town, they were praying. In heaven, God was listening. In the prison, Peter got a visit. God's moves. Trust him. He'll do some stuff you never, that will leave you speechless. But you got to give it to him. Somebody say, give it to him. Come on, lift your hands. Hallelujah. God, we thank you. God, we thank you. God, we magnify you. God, if I had 10,000 tongues, thank you, Mom. I couldn't tell you enough for what you've done. Thank you that you kept me from danger seen and unseen. <laughs> thank you. I feel it old school. Thank you that my sheets were not my winding cloth and my bed was not my cooling board. But when I got up this morning, the blood was still running warm in my veins. Thank you that I'm still in my right mind. Thank you that the enemy didn't take me out. Thank you that you covered me from the moment I woke up to the moment I walked out the house. I give you glory, God. I can't thank you enough. God, a few of your children at 801 Northeast Fifth Street have come together in here because we believe that when prayers go up, we can get your attention. So God, we're asking you to move right now. Somebody at this altar is here for their children. Somebody at this altar is here for their grandchildren. Somebody at this altar is here for themselves. So God, move in the name of Jesus. Move in the name of Jesus. Somebody believes you're still the God of breakthrough. You're still the God of deliverance. You're still the God of way making. So God, in the name of Jesus, do it right now. Give me a heart to pray 
Give me a mind to pray. Give me a spirit to pray. And God, if I don't ask nothing else from you, let me ask you one more thing. Come quickly, Lord. <laughs> Come quickly, Lord. 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 Come quickly and heal. Come quickly and deliver. Come quickly and promote. Come quickly, Lord. Come now, Lord. Come now, Lord. Come on now, Lord. Do what you only can, you can do. In the name of Jesus. You're a wonderful God. You're an awesome God. So we come to you now. Somebody needs a blessing at their school. Somebody needs a blessing on their job. Somebody needs a blessing in their body. Somebody needs a blessing at their house. Come quickly, Lord. In the name of Jesus, I believe it today. I believe it today. In the name of Jesus, we request it, God. Break the addiction right now, God. And you get all the glory. And we'll be careful to give you the praise. We're not going to leave church the same way we came to church. But I'm leaving church in power. I'm leaving church with my prayers answered. I'm leaving church walking in victory. I'm leaving church walking in faith. In the name of Jesus. I don't just have victory. My whole house got victory. Everything connected to me got victory. Everything connected to me got victory. Everything connected to me got victory. In the name of Jesus, thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Come on, take two more seconds. Thank you, God. 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 In the name of Jesus, this is our prayer. In Jesus' name, every heart shouted, hallelujah. Amen. Come on, give them praise right now if you believe it. If you believe you got God's attention, give them praise. Hug somebody, love somebody. Thank you. Hug somebody, love somebody. Hug somebody, love somebody. Somebody give him praise if you know it's already done.